Today on Expert Tips, we have Frank Goss from Sullivan Goss Galleries. He's the foremost expert in paintings in general, and today he honored us, brought us a painting. It looks very interesting. Can you please explain this painting to our viewers, please, Frank? Well, and I would, I would make sure the viewers know that we've, Michael and I have known each other for over 20 years, and we've had a wonderful relationship, and we help each other. So I brought a painting for today's show that was much lighter than things that we've talked about in the past. And this is the product of surrealism. And uh, Michael noted right away that it reminds him of Salvador Dali, who would of course be the, one of the great surrealists. And surrealism sort of started in the, in the famous cafe, in downtown Paris, in the famous Cafe Le Du Magot, the two maggots. What a lovely expression for a restaurant. <laughs> we want to eat there, don't we? Um, and all of these artists got together and they were very interested in merging the sort of real imagination with traditional things. So drawing and painting were thought to be important. These people thought that they really needed to know how to paint and draw well. And so you'll see uh, in this little painting, beautiful little painting, where all of the absurdities you could imagine are, are woven in. And this is by an artist whose name is John Wilde. And Wilde was part of a movement in Wisconsin, of all places. I mean, how, how could you Wisconsin. have a surrealist movement in Wisconsin? But I think Wisconsin was so conservative that, that by locking down all of these artists to certain kinds of production, out came this kind of strange thing. And it's called then and called today magic surrealism. And so there is, you can feel there's some sense of magic in here. And absurdity is all over the place. So we have a freestanding wall with the letters W and B on the wall without any explanation of what on earth is going on. Here would be a balloon floating up in the air behind the wall. And above the uh, balloon is a parrot. And a parrot's got a rose in his mouth. God knows what's going on here. And there are all kinds of little things going on around those. And we'll go to those in just a second. But you can see that there are things that are drawn. Uh, this, this man that appears to be in a net. There appears to be an actual little photo, a painting on the wall. Some kind of a Christmas ornament. And the guy looking and over the wall. And a guy looking over the wall. What on earth is he doing? And maybe that's Wilde. Maybe John Wilde had... I mean, he was so hounded by the world at the time that it's not, John, you can really paint. It's okay. You don't have to do these kinds of absurd things. You could do real paintings. And so his paintings didn't sell very well. And eventually he makes his way to New York. And in New York, they're going, oh my God, this is, this is great stuff. That was after Salvador Dali's shows, though. And then Dali, when he came to uh, America, the dealer who showed his work, put, met him in, in La Domingo, met him in Paris and said, you know, I'll do a show for you in America. You'll be the biggest hit going. So he picks up, he picks out 30 pieces and they're shipped to America. And the 30 pieces go on the wall in New York City in the best gallery in New York City. And the 30 pieces come down a month later and are shipped back to Dolly. Not one. Oh sold. my God. Oh, what a tragedy for everybody, right? Because there's huge expense in mounting a show like that. So a year goes by and the dealer says one more time, you know, uh, Salvador, if you'd give me 30 other paintings, I think the, the world's ready for this now. And this is in, 30, in, the, in the 1930s, and the Great Depression is on. And so, you know, going, stepping out on the limb with surrealist work may be too hard for people. So anyway, they put the second show up, and a, and a month later, they take all 30 pieces and they send them back oh my to goodness. Paris. So two years go by, the dealer goes back to Dolly and says, you know, I, I, I hate, I, they were, we were such a failure at showing these, we'd like to do one more show. And Dolly is very hesitant to do it, but the, the dealer says, I'll pick up all the expenses, don't worry. And the 32 paintings are sent to America, and at the end of the month, 32 paintings are sold. It's just hard to believe how there was a moment when they weren't ready, and absurdism was way too hard. To, and I think in 38 was the show that sold out. And Salvador Dali, since that day, has been the sort of name of namesake of surrealism. But anyway, here we have this um, a wonderful scarf up. I have no idea why we have the little diamond edges, but they're all elements. The chair very clearly drawn with kind of a chair shadow and kind of a human being shadow and all little elements of, of human beings. This is where this painting gets to be fun. This is the only painting I could bring by Wilde that didn't have a frontal female nude in it. That would be very much part of what he would have done. And he, he didn't shy away from male nudes at all. 
he, he just he, he just wouldn't usually do them frontal. Um, so all of these paintings from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s are are done with this kind of scene, but with a female laying sort of provocatively down somewhere in the in the painting. And you can see he's got a little um, list over here that says calamity list. And this is the humor of of uh, the artist who's done all. He he suffers from of what what Dolly suffered from, that he did all these paintings. And the artists in America thought he was one of the greatest painters, but the patrons in America were like, mm, I don't know about those. But it is part of the movement that didn't want to put things in a painting that were so specific that the commercial buyers of art in America would come and go, oh, that'll look great over the couch. That was not what Wilde wanted. What Wilde wanted was for you to look at this and, and see it and observe it and change. So, there. Wow. John Wilde. Thank you so very much. Very Wealth welcome. of knowledge. I learned a lot today. I thank you so very, very You're much. You're very welcome, I appreciate Michael. It. Always good to see you. Frank Goss from Sullivan Goss Galleries. Wealth of knowledge. Thank you very much. See you next week on Expert Tips.